on your market set, go. Everybody's ready. Okay, we will convene the meeting at 7.05 p.m. And we have a member of the public, if you would like to introduce us and tell us why you're here. Sure. My name is George Tavares. I'm actually here because I know Jack and uh, I would offering my services to fix your problem with the handicap button on the outside of the door of the building. Um, on a couple of occasions, a few people, friends of mine, who tried to get in, they couldn't get in for one reason or another. And uh, that kind of hurts a little. So I'd like to, as well as there are some violations um, that you're in right now, which, you know, you really shouldn't be there because someone could uh, bring a suit against the town. And so I'd like to get that fixed for you as soon as possible. Very nice. Can we segue into a premature view of the director's report? Do you want to talk about what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Yes. Yeah, so I, I can I can speak directly to that. The, um, the so just to provide a little bit of background about why the situation has been as it's been. Uh, the, the door is part of a town-wide access system. Um, there's going to be a, you know, you, you, there will be the ability to swipe yourself into, uh, I, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be all the town buildings or most of the town buildings, but there has been a network uh, that, that's been being built around town to link all of the buildings together, and it's taken roughly about four years to get this done. Um, and that has finally been completed. That was something that um, we really didn't have anything to do with or any direct control over. Sure. Uh, but it put us in the position where the door was not functional. In the meantime, the, uh, me the mechanical uh, elements of the door have been, have been completed as of this week. The door is now powered. Uh, it can now be opened using the buttons at the uh, inside and outside of the of the entrance, oh. and uh, we should be good to go. But that it, it it should be said that that is the only door that has mechanical uh, has a mechanical op operator. The other doors in the building do not have them. They were never designed to have them. So if that was something that we were to add um, down the road, we'd have to discuss you know what that means, which doors would be. Uh, affected and uh, get quotes for that for that work but that was as we understand it we are within compliance of ADA with all the doors that are in the building in terms of the, the passages the width you know the width to get through in a, in a wheelchair the weight of the doors etc excellent the the only the only thing I'll say not not to be nasty or anything Yep. But that connection was irrelevant of the network connection. That could have been done at any time. That, that's it fine, has, and I'm not an electrician, yeah. so no, I, no, I, we, we, just, we struggled with the uh, with the project manager and the uh, and the general contractor to get a functioning yeah, door. No, just a, just an FYI. Yeah, so, no, I, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. I understand, <laughs> um, but we were not able to get it done, and uh, it is now hopefully a good point. So, uh, and we are, you know, we're, we're very set along with everyone else that we didn't have that functionality sooner than, than we did. Yeah. And then the only other the only other thing is they keep pinning one of the doors because I know my wife was in here last week and she had a whole armful of doors and she was in a hurry and she went to get out the door. She hit the door that was pinned and almost broke her wrist. And the explanation of the person that was here said, oh, the fire department says that we can do that and the building inspector says we can do that. No, you cannot. That's a double door. The reason it is a double door is because of your occupancy permit, and as well as the reason there are crash bars on that door, is that means free egress. And when you say free egress, I, I don't have to any have any prior knowledge that anything I can get out either one of those doors. So that's the other thing that you really should take care of. Someone's pinning one of those doors during that. The day. That was the solution before the full functionality was you know, that the doors were fully operating. Now. When you turn the key out in the hallway, the bars are sucked in, the doors are completely unlocked, there is no there's no mechanism holding them shut. So this I'm just saying, this is like literally 
this week. I can show it to you right now. I have the key right here. Oh. So we, we can we can, no, that's we can great. do that. But I mean that that's how the doors are operating. So once the, the power is turned on and the, the door is unlocked, right. the bars come in and you're able to push them freely. There's not you don't have to push the crash bar in to release the lock. It just opens. So when you exit, if those crash bars are pushed in, how do you open the door? You just well, they're pushed in, meaning they're unlocked. They're so when we were pinning the door, you would push the crash bar in and pin the door, and then it was supposed then it would open freely. Okay. So you're no longer having to pin the doors. No, we're no longer. It's now operating as it is supposed to operate. Okay. Okay. Cool. And if the power goes out, those doors release. So I that, can get. That is. That is. This. This is. Such a new development uh, that I don't have the, okay. all the answers no, no, for no. that. But you should you should check it thoroughly to be sure. It sure, it's, absolutely. It's, yeah. So we're we're dependent on the on the you know the the town maintenance folks that are sort of overseeing this project, and it's um, you know it is in progress. There is more functionality that will be coming. Um, it's not a complete done deal because we don't have at this point we don't have the ability to have people swipe themselves in. We can't do that yet. Right. Um, so the door is basically just you know, electrified, but that's it. I thought, don't you have other card readers on this building, though? <clears throat> no. We oh, okay. That was the money. There's Back. a card reader. There's a card reader on the exterior door. There's a card reader for this room, and there's a card reader right. for the smaller conference room. Oh, okay. They just never put one on that door. On which door? On the the end, main entrance where the double doors are. There is there is one out there. Oh, I know, and it's not functioning. No, that's what I'm saying. Because the door, the door was only fun. It, it, that that functionality is not here yet. We're we're still working on that because that's that's part and parcel of the network that's being built, that's being implemented. Okay, if they say so. Because I mean, not, it's not my. Like, no, no, I know. It's not. It's not no. a system. It's a no, I know. It's a system. That's but being, the, you have doors here now that are on card readers. That means there's a panel in this building. Yeah. And in order for that card reader to function. All it needs is a panel that's in the building. It has nothing to do with your network. Okay, that's fine. I, so, and I understand that. That's all right. We, no, we, need, a, we, would need, yep. we would need an apparatus to create cards to swipe in. And that's not, we're not the, we're not the entity that's creating okay. these cards. No, I just so, was trying to give you some FYI. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Because, I, because some of the explanations that were given to me and the friends of mine that couldn't get in, that finally got in, was just incorrect information. So whoever was giving out that information was given the wrong information. That's, yeah, that's I mean, at a certain point we just started directing people to the town hall because it wasn't, <laughs> not, you know, it's sure. not our, no, it's not yeah, our equipment, it's not, it's not our project, right. unfortunately. And at Trump's, we, might, we were not able to get anything done right. more quickly than this. I'm just, I'm just glad that the, uh, the two folks that kept bugging me that were going to go to the ADA, I told them, hold up, let them, because it is a hefty fine. Mm -hmm. And you guys were way over. Um, the building's been up for what five years seven years so we know. know that we have kind of brought that has been brought to the attention of town hall and they right. have looked into it and they have told us because we like you have felt the same way yeah. um, and uh, people have gone there and we've been assured no, by town hall that we're they were totally incorrect yeah. especially when they covered it up with a piece of paper bag uh, that's that's even worse. That's a civil suit. So a lot of things were done that you really could have gotten deep to do for. Well, it sounds like progress has been made. Yeah, that's great. I mean, as long yeah. as they're working, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm glad to hear. All right. Yeah. Good. Anything else? No, that was it. Okay. I just wanted to see if I could help. If it wasn't working, that's all. And it seems like they finally got it done, so that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, George. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Have a great rest of your meeting. <laughs> you want to stay? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been home. Oh, we're going to do the minutes. I haven't been home yet, so I want to go eat and then get ready for the... Uh, yeah. The, the circus? The yeah. circus that's yeah. going to be on later. Thank you. Take care. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, George. Minutes. Can we have a motion and a second? I move we accept. 
I would second. Okay. Any comments or corrections or changes needed? Thank you for the tip about uh, putting in the link to the YouTube video. Right in. That was a good, good suggestion. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Oh, I made this for you because we used to have filming before, and I'll be happy to send it electronically, but I only. Oops. I got lost. I can get there. Great. It's just if you can want can to give you corrections. I suppose. Well, just don't call yeah. my house because. Wait, what? We don't even know if that works anymore. <laughs> don't try that. Okay. So the cell phone oh, is perfect. valid. Yeah, yeah. The house perfect. phone, not so much. Okay. Cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, got an extra space in there. But anyway. Do you have an extra copy of that that I can take, or no? Are you out? You can have mine because I'll probably want the electronic one. Oh, okay. If anyone else finds any other <coughs> blessing changes <coughs> or corrections, no. please let me know. Does anybody have another pen? Thank you. I'll be, I promise to give back. I promise. Thank you. Oh, it's nice to keep it. Okay. I'm just kidding. Um, hmm. Director's report. Okay, so um, as you are aware, Joanne and I worked the month of August on the surveys for the long range plan. Uh, we met our self created goal uh, of getting 200 responses for each survey. We had uh, 217 for the first one, 255 for the second, and uh, as of tonight, we had 204 for the for the third. So I was happy that we you know that we got what is hopefully a representative um, sampling. Uh, for us to draw some conclusions. Um, I, we, I do have the the, uh, the results here. I, I don't think we should spend a lot of time looking at this, but but we will, I think when, when we have a little more time to work with this, we'll be able to put together a better presentation. But I think, you know, you can see, you know, just at a glance that there is, um, you know, a nice um, distribution, distribution yeah, of, of age groups um, uh, for folks that have, you know, children in, in the school age children in the home, um, primarily hmm. these are having residents. So we have at the beginning of each survey, we, um, we kind of tacked on, I don't know if everyone took it, but the first section of each survey is basically the same question so that each time we had a survey on a different subject, you'd be able to then look at that and see, you know, how that, you know what what kind of demographics we were looking at in the in the response, and so hopefully they're going to be relatively similar from survey to survey. Um, but we had uh, there's a lot of information. There's a very long tail here from uh, I think people entering their own their own information for other. Um, so we'll have to kind of go through and pick a category that that most fits and then you know, retail those numbers and then... There were some, do you mind if I jump yeah, in jump one second? Yeah. There were some responses, I think not in the first one, but in the second and third that we think were bots. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we may, I can look at it as a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to toggle back to the spreadsheet? So we may pull out the bot so if I look at a spreadsheet, I can see which line was the bot, and I can pull out all their responses. So what but makes you say that? Um, do you, you want to? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can find one. So there's like random words in the about, yes. like whether it's like where it says additional information, there's like weird random words. Um, so we can see the data as a spreadsheet like this, or we can see it the other way. And um, yeah, right, you're a 
Well, you do, do you these all the time, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yes. I'm sort of looking for the evidence. Teachers again. live by yeah. these. The bot evidence is, um, it's probably a little easier to see in the other form, like, because then you can just go to the ones that have yeah, the, which um, questions were and it wasn't the first one, it was more in the two and three, yeah. where we have, like, Oh, it's okay. Oh, oh. Got some. okay. Yeah. <laughs> It was kind of clear, I right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll we'll kind of look at those and see, like, you know, where we had those. So there's a number of people mentioning the Khalil Library, uh, the Khalid Library. I have yeah. not heard of that. I have heard of it. Um, Would, but I, I can't speak to, I really can't speak to it. I, I don't know much about it, but I have heard of it. Um, yeah, so we wouldn't take out necessarily answers we don't like. We would just take out the answers that were yeah. absolute, like, you know, when you see a character like that, that's yeah. a, and then we'll just go across the line, that line in the spreadsheet and pull those out. So it needs mm -hmm. a little cleanup, but. Yeah, okay. but I think we got I think we got some good information here to look at, and um, and as we have a chance to, to sit there and, and think about it, we'll work on next steps as far as do we want to have people come back for another you know conversation, another you know discussion about certain aspects that jump out at us that seem to be um, in need of clarification. Uh, but I, I think we'll probably hopefully have time to maybe talk about that next Absolutely. week. Absolutely. So yeah, so I was happy with that. Oh, and do we still need to do we still need to do a drawing? I think we still have. I need to draw the third. Okay. Um, the second never responded, so I'm gonna go back and do another. Pick another, another yeah. second. Yeah. And Claire says thank you. <laughs> she won. <laughs> won. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we felt like we were a little worried about that. But yeah. <laughs> Um, it was, you know, I used a random, to, to, so the audience knows I used a random number generator. So the spreadsheet lists right. 1 to 204, and then I went online and did a random number generator. And then as long as the person supplied their information at that number, that was the winner of the... It's also possible that the, that the second person whose identity we're not clear on we had contact information, but I don't know if we had any. We had an email address, but not uh, a name. So I had to send like this random, like, hi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no one responded. So it's possible that that was maybe one of the, that could have been one of the weird, you know, one of the weird responders. It's possible. But anyway. So we'll we redraw but, the last but Yeah, so we, we'll, finish, we'll finish that and we'll get those, uh, those gifts out to the winners. So can you just summarize what your next steps will be? Uh, besides drawing the random winners. Yes. <laughs> Uh, Patrick and I will be meeting and and kind of pulling together a better report for all of you and then from there I think we're hoping as a board we'll make a decision about next steps when you when you see the information in a clearer way yeah well, so hope, we're hoping we might have a suggestion well, I was gonna say, yeah we might have a suggestion for you that's a good place but to we're not gonna just we're not gonna leave you with an open-ended <clears throat> right yeah <laughs> Joanne, how did you come up with the questions that went into these surveys? So, we used a lot. So, in the past, the survey we did the last time had a lot of really good information, and it was done really well. So, a lot of the things we pulled out were from that original time we did the survey. And then Patrick really had some things he wanted to add to it. And so the, the, I think when the survey was done the first time, it was a one, it was a single survey. Um, and the scope of the survey was a little bit more limited because I think at the time that that, that survey was being done for the long range plan, it was very clearly in the mind of the trustees that building a new library was the goal. So a lot of the, a lot of the questions there were sort of, seemed to be, you know, kind of built around that. About, mm -hmm you know, the assumption that there would be dissatisfaction with the current building or, or, you know, not necessarily an assumption, but like questioning, like how satisfied or dissatisfied are you with like the level of service you're getting now? Um, and so in 
this case, we use that as a starting point. We use like a lot of the questions about demographics that had been in that mm -hmm. in that survey. I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was done. I think a little before my time, and I think that was probably Allison that put that, that yes. together at that time. Um, so we kind of like started with her, you know, with her survey from whatever that was eight, mm -hmm. nine years ago or more, and then um, built decided to to do take this approach of having the shorter surveys because we didn't want people to have survey fatigue with like a super long survey with many, many questions. Um, and it didn't necessarily matter that the same 200 people answered the survey if we could get 200 people, you know, in a town of 5,500 to answer a subset, you know, of the questions. So we did went with a shorter survey based on these these themes of like, you know, um, you know, so the first one was staffing and services, libraries, community commons, and then building for the future. Can I just, yeah, jump in and say that the themes came from, a lot of the first information came from that first meeting we all had where we saw what people were thinking about, so that's how we picked the themes also, like looking at that when we had that time here together. Well, and impressive responses. Yeah. More than 200 for all three surveys. Yeah, I mean, I think it. I think it. Uh, I think it goes to show that we have a better, maybe a bit better reach than we that we expected when we kind of use all the resources at our disposal. We have a, you know, we have some email lists. We have, you know, the friends of the library email blast. We use the town's uh, the town's email blast mm -hmm. to send us out social media, regular paper signage. So we kind of pulled out all the stops, and, and thankfully it worked. I think one of the things I was happy about, and I know it's so it's weird, but I think Patrick and I really thought it was important that we hear from people who choose other libraries and why they choose not to be here. And some of that information is in here, which is really nice to see. Like some people said, well, the hours don't work for me, or you know, or I work closer to another library. But what I, we do have some nice information about that which I think can inform yeah, what well, we do also. Well, I think actually one of the things that was interesting that I can... Oh, there is that question right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, let me see if we can find anything about hours. So, these are, this, is the, uh, this is the response on the hours that people would like to use the library. Let's mm -hmm. see. We got a strong response for um, you know there's a there's a strong response for some some Sunday hours. Um, also, weekend afternoons. Yeah, well, Saturday, Saturday afternoons. morning, Saturday afternoon. That's easy because we're already open. We're already open now. So, but it seems like a lot of people want those hours. Friday was surprising because Friday is not as busy a day as some days, but. And Patrick and I did have this talk when we were built thinking about times, like when we were kind of hashing it out, one of the things we said was that Friday nights were originally put in the schedule. See, there's a benefit to having been here for like 12 years. We originally opened on Friday nights because DVDs. So mm -hmm. folks would want to come in Friday night and get their DVDs. That's why we had originally added Friday night to the um, library schedule because people would come in Friday nights and get their DVDs for the weekend. Night. It was like, right, it was like Blockbuster and it was very busy on Friday nights. So mm -hmm. like, there's a place we may want to look because people watch Netflix now. <laughs> they don't necessarily come in for DVDs on Friday nights. So, you know, it will be interesting. Like we'll look at the attendance numbers and we'll think it through. Right, there may be some, there may be some things that we can do to to tweak the hours in a way that's budget neutral. Um, I think it's also clear that, that um, there is demand, there's a demand for evening hours, um, but there was, I think there's consistently been a, a, a strain of feedback. I can't really say that it's in the surveys yet, but there, we've often gotten that, that comment from people across the desk of why we can't be open every day at the same time in the morning. I think people would really like us to just be open at, you know, just like a regular retail store, like you open at nine or, you know, 10 or whatever, every day. Um, I don't know that we can get there right away, but 
like that might be something to include as well. Does anyone at the table know, are the Jones and the Forbes libraries open on Sundays? Um, I thought Jones not. Jones is during the uh, during school year, but not in the summer. I thought they and ended Sundays. I don't, they didn't used to. I can't speak for I'm going to look it up right now. Okay. I don't think Forbes is open, but I think Lily is open on Sunday. Hmm. I looked once, not too long ago. But unless you're going down to Springfield, those are the nearest ones. No one else has hmm. Sunday hours, is my recollection. You're right, they added Sunday 1 to 5.15. Which one is that? The Jones. That's the Jones, yeah. So that's during the school year or all year round? They did it starting September 2nd. It's at to May 31st, so yeah, yeah. school year. So summer, mm -hmm. they changed the hours. And I will say as a teacher in Amherst, they have a similar situation where um, students go to the library after school. Um, although it's a, you know, it's a smaller time window because school ends at 345 in our high school. But also, we may think about this, I don't know, we, the Jones does a lot of work with our life skills students in getting them library cards, they come regularly, they learn about checking out mm -hmm. books. I don't know if Hadley has a life skills program or not, but they do a lot of that during the school day. So any other questions about, about this stuff? And there'll be a lot coming. What's that? I said there'll be a lot of information coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully it, it gives a clear direction and isn't just contradictory. And, mm. But yeah, really happy with how it turned out so far. Um, the website, yeah. Forbes Library is closed on Sundays. Uh -huh. Right, but does it say that Lily is open? Uh, I didn't see Lily, but I'll go here. So if it's okay, I'll move on to, uh, so we, uh, I've got a little sneak preview of the work in progress on the new library website, which, so this is the front page, the home page of the library website, and you have uh, a very simplified um, layout compared to the existing website, which is fairly cluttered in my opinion. Um, a bunch of stuff on there that it's are, a, yeah. It's a lot like the friends one we set up, yeah, which is very nice. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of the information here is in pull down menus, um, and you know these are live links. They, the, this is not published, but but this is all you know this is all functional um, in, at the draft level. Um, these are, okay, you've actually got the that's the archives for the. Meeting minutes. So the, the archive of meeting minutes will continue to reside on the town website because I think by law they need to. Um, and then got the official town calendar link here. Who's building this? Uh, yes. I, I, this is a Squarespace website. It's all mm -hmm. modular, and you just kind of you know you kind of mess with it until you get got what you like. So everything here, everything obviously is customizable. If there's anything here in terms of you know, that you don't like or you would like to see it in a different way, it can continue to evolve. Um, but the important thing is that we get something that's functional and um, easy to maintain. Patrick, do you think it's worth putting Hadley MA Public Library? So this comes I do, up because I yeah. Google Amherst all the time and, and wind up in New Amherst, Hampshire. New York. Right. Oh, yes. I end up in New York. And, <laughs> and the DPW fields phone calls from Amherst residents about streets that don't exist in Amherst, MA, um, <laughs> because they've Googled it and then just blind dialed mm -hmm. a number, not even thinking that that area code is wrong. Um, well, see, okay, I'll, I'll have to think that think that one through. The the um, to get to the phone number, though, you would have to scroll down to the address, which clearly shows Hadley MA. But I, perhaps there's a way that we can work that in at the top with that. 
you know, maybe a, a sub. Or maybe a, maybe well, the town of Hadley. Oh, is that what you meant? Town of Hadley Mass, like on this right here? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, yeah. that, that would be something so like easy to do with that. Design the head and line. Yeah. I think if you go on Google and you put in Hadley, though, sometimes you end up in Hadley in England someplace. You yeah. never know. They used to spell that differently. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah, someone L E I G H. Mm -hmm. I went through this with Amherst with the 9 11 remembrance ceremony just yesterday. I'm like looking for the street that the, like, I've never heard of that street before. <laughs> and I work, I've worked here for a while, you know. <laughs> oh, that's Amherst, New York. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> This happens a lot on websites. So, there's really not much to say um, beyond that at this point, other than that this is the this is the basic template. The the this is the this is actually just a screenshot. It's not functional mm -hmm. right now, but the we will bring the the library widget that we use now oh, on the, yeah, the card that. website that will be embedded here. Um, we will have um, again using a widget um, to display. Events from the from the library calendar, which is the product that we're mm -hmm. that we're working to set up. So there will be some sort of a scroll feed to show you like things that are coming up. It won't be the whole calendar at a glance. It will because uh, unfortunately that calendar cannot be embedded mm -hmm. the whole thing. But that might be too much anyway. So we're going to probably just do you know another similar to the library thing, like a scroll of like upcoming events for whatever time period you know parameter that we set for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll just have over here. We'll have a column of uh, of news items, so more text-based things that we want to post. Library closed tomorrow due to snowstorm or whatever, so you can see things at a glance. Uh, is this relevant or not? Um, you do you know if this platform is scalable to looking at mm -hmm. it on a device? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's supposed okay. to. Yes, you're supposed okay. to be able to look at yeah, it. Do they have device. that little button where you can? see when you're setting it up. I know that other, uh, you know, when you set Yeah, it up, I haven't yeah. done that. I'm, I'm yeah. quite sure that that is. Yeah, there, most of the that. platforms I work with do that. Yeah. So, and that's it. And so we will also be able to collect email, um, email addresses for people that want to sign up. Um, that we can use for email lists. And you're expecting this in November? Was that what I saw? Yeah. That's the goal. Okay, November. great. Looks good. It's really nice. Yeah. Looks I like really the nice. <laughs> Desperately needed. I like the photo a lot. Great. It had gotten a lot of early praise in today's meeting. Yes. Seeing the <laughs> asparagus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Whoever is responsible for choosing the picture of asparagus is brilliant. That is my uh, kitchen. That is my kitchen. Wow. Welcome to my kitchen. So, I mean, the thought behind that being that, you know, I really want to. The, the thought of the library and, and the, you know, for people to, when visiting the website and thinking about the library, to be thinking about the library as something that they take into their homes rather than just a brick and mortar thing, but really the spirit of the library is something that you come here, you take something with you back home, and it's a domestic feeling as opposed to just a, you know, a town building or right. what have you. So, so that's that, and then uh, let's see. Um, so we just we went over the stuff with the with the access hardware that just really happened quickly. Um, I mean I can't I don't really want to get into it, but but it is functioning. Hopefully we will have a better sense of like the full functionality very soon. I'm very eager to get that working so that we can begin to offer people after hours access to these rooms because I think that that is also going to. Um, Potentially change the dynamic. It's hard to tell from the from the surveys how much of the demand for evening hours is just because people want a place to come and study. Because I think that's largely it. I think I think people are you know hungry to have space to to hold their events, to hold a meeting, to to study what have you. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's just because everyone wants to come here and browse for a book at mm -hmm. nine at night on a Tuesday. You know, I think it's probably a little bit of that, of that but it's primarily driven by I think other desires. Um, so hopefully we can begin to meet those by providing that access, even if it's not a staff access. And the 
I don't have any information on the children's wall repair. Um, and tomorrow we're actually having the folks coming in, if you recall, uh, you authorized the repair or the modification of ductwork that was not that was installed properly um, to allow access to the to the cassette that needs to be open to change filters and things like that because they haven't been able to get up. So that's that's happening tomorrow morning. And just a side note, I heard an interesting thing on the radio today that was talking about uh, a library of things, but it was the city of Chicago has a library of tools mm. run and maintained by the city of Chicago. They have over 3,000 tools in it. Mm. And uh. for a small fee, depending on the tool, you can check out a tool and use it and then bring it back. There's a private it, one in Philadelphia. Like is there? They said it's been wildly successful. Well, especially if you live in an apartment, you don't yes. have room for all those yes. tools. I mean, that's, that's really the goal for the, for the library of things. It can, be, it can scale to any size. It's yeah. really the only limitation for us is physical space to store things, right. you know, really. And, and also, uh, you know, quite frankly, to, to build, a, build a collection like this and maintain it requires a degree of um, staff time that yes. gets diverted from something else unless you add staff because it's so popular that you can somehow justify the additional you know the additional staffing but it doesn't yeah. you know it as much as it seems like it, it shouldn't add that much time it does take time to like make sure that things are working to help people when they can't figure out why the thing you know doesn't work or what am i doing wrong um, so it is a level of complication but yes it's it's a brilliant idea and it's the kind of thing that, yeah, with simple simple tools and things like that, it would be great to be able to offer a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. You know, who, who wants to have like an edger? You know, everybody doesn't need to own an edger. Right. You know, those kinds of things. So hopefully we'll begin to build that. So is roof status part of that? Well, I thought you would have the roof on your director's report. So <laughs> oh, sorry. I would suggest that we, since we're talking about the building and all, let us move to the roof. Yes. <laughs> Proposal. Physically. <laughs> no, it's dark. <laughs> I've been on that roof and I'm never getting on it. Hey, wow. That's a good idea. That's. Yeah. I'm, I thought I was going to die. That wasn't listed in the uh, <laughs> director's <laughs> job description. No, it's. it's like I don't, I don't know if it's in the, the part. It was fine going up, but the part where you have to step off the roof onto the ladder was, uh, was pretty. Oh, much, yeah. I, I was pretty sure that Mike Spank Nable was going to have to come with the. With fire truck and get me off the roof. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I had shared with you all the draft draft report that came last Friday and Patrick sent the updated estimate from Gail that describes in somewhat greater detail exactly what they are proposing to do. Um, I was pleased to see that they were going to consult with the library in advance once they figured out where they wanted to do the exploratory work. Um, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it, I'm this comes out of our budget, the town budget. How does this get funded? So we, there are. I haven't had a chance to actually look at the uh, to get the, the, approved, yeah. the actual balances, uh, but there is still money remaining from the original construction budget. There are, are also funds available through through money that was collected and held in the Hadley Library Fund, which is the capital campaign, right. uh, and other related, you know, similar donation based. Mm -hmm. Uh, assets that we have that are, you know, able to be used in this way. So the, the money is there to do this. It's just a matter of choosing where to take it. Anything else, Julie? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I mean, you know, I mean, this is only for the discovery process and does not include money to does it redesign the roof no. should it need to be redesigned, which perhaps it's where we're heading. But I think we have to oh, do we have yeah. to. Oh, yeah. gosh. Okay. We oh, do have to do this. So, All right. Uh, not to be a negative, but I actually want to know, 
but I don't want to know, but I wonder, the stupid question of the day is, why, like, could we just go forward with putting a new design in a new roof? Like, or do we feel like we don't have that answer or we need to explore more? I, I just wonder when we're spending a lot of money to figure out what went wrong, like, when does it stop? I, I'm not judging, I'm just asking. I, oh, Lynn, you tell you go for it. I think one of the points that John made in his presentation to us mm -hmm. was, we don't know what lies beneath oh, the that's shingles. Right, that's right, that's right. And unless and until we know the condition of we need to design. the Insulation and the Thanks. insulation, as well as the oh, I lost the word, Jack. Well, well the flat, he, the, 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 yeah, he had some the thermal deck. pictures yeah, the that yes. showed that I, maybe mm -hmm. the Thank the deck the underneath <laughs> yeah. was yes. partly saturated, and then some other places where it was probably dry. But uh, no one knows for sure. Right, so we don't know the depth do the of the work. Right. Right. right, that's my. I'm sorry, yeah. I forgot that. I saw that yeah. and just like. I, I got lost in the numbers and was like... <laughs> and it, sounds, it sounds like from discussing this with John, and I've had a couple of conversations with him on the phone as well, and it sounds like, and I don't want to misquote him and I don't want to mischaracterize this, but it seems also that they need to do that exploration, not only of the condition, but they also need to confirm that what the as-built drawings say was done has been done, that it corresponds to what is on the, on the schematic so that they can then make a, an informed decision about what the corrective action might be. I mean, when I say corrective, I mean, do you rip the roof off? Do you, apparently it's a possibility to like, with a metal roof, you can go over. Um, so it sort of depends on whether they need to, you know, how deeply they need to, you know, be remediating something. Yeah, I had one more um, thought on this, and I know, I, I know they have to put this in, but I was uh, a little upset to see when they said that, you know, it may not look, they're going to drill or, you know, do their work, and they may not be able to put it back in the same shape that it was, and we may see visual uh, places where they've, you know, done the work, and I felt, well, why, and that seems... <laughs> Very sad. I think that's. I think it's primarily a caveat. Yeah. And it certainly has to do with whether or not we have enough leftover shingles. Yeah. But even still, those will not have experienced four or five years yeah. worth of weather. Right. So, totally. so even if they are the same shingle, right. the appearance mm -hmm. might be somewhat different. I don't think we're talking about oh, there's going to be this big bump. Mm -hmm. I think the surface will be smooth. But the shingles may look like they've been replaced right. because they will have been. Yeah, in, in, I'm not sure if this analogy is totally out, but in some ways consider this a biopsy before mm -hmm. larger surgery. And again, we don't know the shape of the patient and we have to figure this out. Um, and hopefully this will go a long way to give us the answer. Did we decide yet on who because they're not going to do the app. They need a roofer to come, right? Is that mm -hmm. that's the that's expert part? Yeah. So that was we are okay. Titan Did I, why was I recommended. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's so my fault. There are some. I think this, uh, it's an optional service by Titan. And the bid is ninety six hundred, if I'm correct. Oh, sorry, it's at the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I stopped when I saw the. I didn't you continue. Yeah. To the, yeah. <laughs> it's my it's fault. another. It's another goal. Yep. Yeah. I was pleased, I was afraid that they were going to identify a roofer closer to them rather than one closer to us. Oh. And I did go look at the Titan Roofing uh -huh. website, mm -hmm. and I would say it probably hasn't been updated very recently, but they have clearly worked on a number of Clark Art Institute, yeah. mm -hmm. Naismith, Museum, um, something over at Williston. Mm -hmm. So some large scale Great projects. Large yeah, scale they've been there. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yes. yeah. High grade projects. Yeah. Good. I mean, I don't have any yeah. aptitude to evaluate, no. but I am assuming that institutions like that 
would have a better vetting process than anything I could do. So one question that I have, and I'm just thinking about this now as we're talking about this, but I'm wondering with something like this where there's an invasive form of work going on with the building, I'm assuming this will require permits? And assuming that there is a permit involved, that means it will be inspected when it's done. So that that is another level of assurance that the that the work, you know, that there are going to be eyes on the work. Uh, right. Hopefully, I mean, it, it, even if it's not required, we should ask that the, you know, that the inspector well, be looking at this. That's an excellent so, question because sometimes it comes down to: is this a complete repair? Is this just a patch job? I mean, what exactly qualifies what for thing? necessitating yeah. a building well, permit? But I would think if you're cutting into the building and then something well, I think that usually it's on the like because then all the permitting right. fees and everything would be in here I don't know anything yeah. for that I mean it's worthwhile asking it doesn't cost anything to ask and better not to get in trouble afterwards so one thing I, I will bring up um, this is such a wild time of uh, major changes for the town obviously um, but the um, you all know that Mike Mason has taken over as the interim town administrator uh, he as of yesterday I believe yesterday was his first day on the job and I will tell you that he called us uh, called me and said um, the select board has given me a clear direction that they've said that they want this situation to, to get full attention they want us to, to come to a resolution on it um, and so you know, he was calling me on his first day in that capacity to, to kind of get the background. Mm -hmm. And so we talked for probably 20 minutes about that. Um, he then, in the meantime, has been in touch with town council to sort of revive that conversation, provide the information that has come up between you know, when, whatever that was a year, year and a half ago, and now, um, including the Gale report, so that they can be you know that they can be giving us some information and one of the things that he he the, one of the bits of feedback that he got from town council was to absolutely make sure that the work that is done is done to and i'm not sure how you how you quantify this but that the when the work is done it is done up to a standard that if there if it did come to a legal and sort of legal action that it would not be it would not totally expose us. Derail because yes. right, they did such a crappy job putting it back together that um, you know they were like, well, no, it's, it's all the fault of the the guy that came after us or something like that. So that came from town council. And I feel like Gail is very <coughs> reputable. Like I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You worried about Titan? Not yeah, worried, I mean, but well, I guess what I would say is that if anything, in my mind, and maybe I don't know if this is rational, but I, I feel like this, this is a good reason for having Gail be the Oh. The party that is vetting the roofer, and therefore they are also yes. responsible for the work of the roofer. Mm -hmm. And if there's a problem with the roofing, we're able to go to Gail and say, you know, we don't think that this is satisfactory. We're not paying the rest of your fee, or until it's resolved. You know what I mean? Having something to be able to Well, and to your original question on page four of this printout, uh, our fee does not include obtaining permits, so they do put that in here just so we're aware you know if you want Gail to sort of be the the group in charge um, maybe that's something to talk to John about yeah I, I will talk I will talk to uh, I will talk to, to, to Tom first and just see if, explain what we're doing and ask him you know what is what what would be required what would be required of the contractor in this situation and see and then go from there so with all this prelude sort of laid out, how can we move it forward? Oh, right. I, I have a question. I, I somehow missed this, and I'm wondering if we're talking about somebody who has made a bid to repair the roof or to redo the roof? No, no, no. No. This, <clears throat> after we had the meeting with the select board, I asked Patrick, because there was the consensus among the trustees and then among members of the select board that the exploratory work needed to happen. So I asked Patrick to get in touch with Gail in order to come up with 
a proposal for us to consider for the exploratory work. So and so that's work. what, yes, okay. that is, yeah. because we can't, we can't responsibly take any other steps exactly. until we know. <clears throat> exactly. And would it be nice to put it all in a package deal? Maybe, but we don't have that option, I don't think. Hmm. So this is... So how, I mean, how much of the roof has to be replaced and repaired and how to offset anything that might happen down the road with the existing roof. Are we going to patch it or are they going to redo it? That's, I was just those are make, questions that are going to have to be resolved. I was just going to make a motion that we um, use, I guess we don't know how much funds in the library building fund. Uh, so I yeah. just I wonder if the motion has to say where we're taking the money from. Uh, possibly. I would I would suggest that the motion specify using any remaining building funds first and supplementing that with so, so other sources. Yeah. So this the other source I, I think the most logical one would be to use the funds that are in the new dream. Yes. Because that, that that's out of disposal. Have the every fund you have to go through the step, intermediate step of getting the funds from the community foundation. To the to the treasurer, so I think we should just get go with the nutrient funds, which we're supposed to be you know that we're supposed to be spent. These are funds to so, pay for what? So I'm making that motion for to, pay for, to, to pay, pay for this for exploratory work. So the so library is going to pay for this. We're going to pay for this. Yes. So you, we have to take a second, then we can discuss. Oh, okay. It wasn't about your motion, though. It was about something else. Go ahead. It was about this, but before the motion. All right, let's get a clear motion on the okay. floor first. Yeah. yeah. So the motion is to, um, it's $27,600 is the total I see. First. No. I mean, that's what I. 27600 Yeah, that's what it was in the. Oh, that, what do you say? Twenty-seven six. That includes a Titan. The optional. But you have twenty nine. Are you looking at the final one that was sent around? Of, of I thought I was looking at the final. I thought I was looking at the final two. But the I that I had what's the date on it? Twenty nine five. Um, is um, it the sixth? Yeah. No, I missed the next yeah. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. September ninth. Um, I wonder if yesterday. Okay. Okay. That so was the one that was a draft that yeah, didn't yeah, I know have it says all draft. of the. Yeah. What's the final total now? Twenty nine thousand five hundred dollars. You want to continue with your motion? Um, motion is to take $29,500 first out of construction funds, followed by Nugent funds, to pay for Gale and the roofing subcontractor to continue the exploratory work on the roof. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Further discussion? Well, I have no, a question that doesn't pertain to the motion per se, okay. but it's about the, this. The, it is about what we're going to get out of this, and I was wondering, Patrick, did is there some reason that they, for all of this, you know, exploratory work which we need to do, they can't also come up with a recommendation? I mean, is there? It, it, it to me logically, it seems that that at follow that. This might include the exploratory work. Should include a recommendation, you know, once they finish the exploratory work. That should be, I don't know. I just feel like for that kind of money, it should be part of the package. But um, well, recommendation for what? A recommendation that says what this is this is what you need to do, do next, right? In terms of as a result of what they find right well but that could just be you need to we need to take out all the insulation we right. need to redo the deck no I'm thinking about something more to we're do not with there yet we yeah. can't, we're not there in yeah. terms of because if you can use what's there mm -hmm. our options are the surfaces that can be applied mm -hmm. to an unventilated right. roof deck which are slate, metal, 
some of the, the uh, might rubber, the polymers, the polymer yes. shingles, yeah. right, or the membrane. Right. Right. Yeah. If we were to do something with asphalt shingles, then we need the ventilated roof. I, I understood that from last time. And that's yeah. Um, okay. But then it's still at some point, even if we know that what the options are, somebody, we would probably want some kind of advice as well from a professional about which would be the most um, likely well, or that would, that would come at, okay, this is the information so we, we, we have. Pay, we would this pay is them what you again need to give us that kind of advice. Someone to do the design work. Select as well as the installation. Help us select an option is basically what my next thought was. I know we're not there, we don't know where we're going to be, but at some point we're going to get all this information and we're going to have to pay somebody else to give us advice about what our options are. I think they're, I think they're going to be forthcoming. I think they've already sort of been giving us that kind of unofficial, well, this, yeah, kind, I, this could happen or that could right, happen. But when it comes to an actual, I mean, it's going to come down to quotes. Quotes don't cost you anything. You know, you're going to have to. But you have to know which way you're going before you get a quote. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, but but you can ask a contractor, give us a price for these two options, and then make a decision. So I don't. I mean, Gail isn't going to do the pricing and design work without another bite at the apple. Right. But we know that going into it. Yeah. This is This is just, no, they were we clear. have to get, yes. Has the company who originally built this roof totally off the hook? Are they, have they been contacted? Have they been involved or is there any guarantee of their work I mean, this is unusual that a roof should fail this quickly and we've seen there was a, uh, a design issue that should have been taken care of are they totally off the hook i think that's really something for town council to you know we're not we're not really in a position to Extract anything from anyone. That's that's a question for the for town for the town administration, select board, and town council to have, to consult their you know have lawyers. Have ask them to yes. explore that question? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking. They're looking. They are. Yes. Okay. That is part of the conversation that Patrick had with the interim town administrator today or yesterday. So there's a motion out okay. there. And it's been further discussion. Yeah. In that case, all in favor of the motion to accept Gail's proposal with the funding sources mentioned. Are you going to I'm abstain? Staying. Okay. You want to and just for the sake of history, um, say a little bit more about the Nugent funding. That was the Kate Nugent left. Um, Fifty thousand dollars, although it grew greatly over time, for specifically for the building of the library. Okay. So that's why we use that fund first, because that's what it was left. I'm sorry. What was that? I was distracted. You just ask just the, what the Nugent fund was. I just explained. well, the, 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 the Nugent. It's this room is named right. after mm -hmm. sure after Kate Nugent, and it was based on a on a gift that came to, actually came before the library was under construction, but the money was waiting for a purpose and it was decided and, you know, we discussed this with, um, with Beth Brown, uh, Kate's sister, sister mm -hmm. and uh, got the okay to use this for the new building and we said yes, and so we made the room, but the money, you know, in just in so the paying of bills, the money is still there in one of the pots that is available. Kate originally left us the money hoping we would get the church so there were long talks, many, like to really go back. We were looking at the church, and that's when Kate kind of started to put us in her will. 
when she thought there was a chance we might have the church next door to the library. And the idea was we were going to originally annex the church to the library. Oh, interesting. The church, mm. but the diocese wouldn't sell us the church. The old St. John's church. Correct. Mm. They, they would only sell it to us with certain provisions yeah. of use. Is that the one the vodka guy owns? Yep. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> might be one of them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wonder what the timeline on this would be. Uh, I believe it says in here three, yeah. does it say three to four weeks? Okay. Yep. Okay. So is the expectation that, um, or the hope that we are at the next select board meeting kind of giving an update? And if so, I think it would be good. I would make the request that we post from now on every time we go to a select board meeting just to be safe in case we ever have to take a vote or they ask us anything, it doesn't hurt. Um, but if we're on their agenda, it, it kind of helps to post. Mm. Perfectly reasonable. There was not a quorum of us the last time, but. Yeah, but it just, it, like, in case there ever is, it's just yeah. a safe strategy. Um, Sorry, I don't know what that means. I'm so sure. if we were at a select board meeting mm -hmm. and say you all had decided to come mm -hmm. and we wanted to debate or have a vote with the select board president mm -hmm. and our, we didn't post the meeting as, a, mm -hmm. you know, us a having a quorum, we couldn't take a vote mm -hmm. on anything. Mm -hmm. So it just opens us. It, it's like one of those things that you just do, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't hurt us if yeah. we're not there. It just helps us if we are, if we need to have it. With open meeting laws, mm -hmm. there are some functions around deliberation mm -hmm. and other things, and it is very much a forward-looking move. Sounds good. So would you clarify for me what this means? I'm not sure what posting or not. We we post our meetings. We yeah, have to do that. Yeah, you post the meeting. You post well, it as a thing. That's done anyway. No, but if we're at the select board meeting and there's a quorum of us, say we all go to the select board meeting, and we're representing the library, mm -hmm. and we have we we decide to talk or debate or do anything with the select board, they would want we would have to post as a library group also having a meeting with the select board that night. It's open meeting law. We would so not be able to take meet, any. Yeah. yeah. Well, anytime we meet. As a committee. We yes, we always post it. We have to post it. But they, select board meets on a different day and a different time. And if we were there as a select board group. As we guests. Have, as guests. We would post. Yes. That's, 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 that's all I want to be clear about. No, if I know we are going to be on their agenda, I will be sure to do that. And let us know if you hear. You know, oh, absolutely. Of course. Okay. No, no, no. I think I am pretty good about you are. keeping you guys. I'm not trying to hoard this for myself, believe me. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm happy to come help support you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we have already covered strategic planning. Was there anything else with regard to LED or? Oh, I know what we didn't do. We didn't do the, um, the goals. library director goals. goals. Yeah. Sorry. Things have been in and out of order. Oh, we only need one. That's right. Did that. Okay. Um, Patrick, do you want to talk about your approach in putting the goals together this way? Briefly? Yeah, so, um, I mean, I think, we, I think we kind of went over this a little bit at the last meeting, but basically my approach to it was to sort of take uh, the, the number of kind of individual 
things that to me were more like items on a to-do list rather than large goals and just sort of take all of those things, take the things that I have in mind as my own internal to-do list, put them together, sort of them into what I felt were comfortable categories. Because I think, you know, in terms of creating goals, it, it, with any given item on that to-do list, it sort of begs the question, why are you doing it? What's the point of this? Is this is just like, you know, something to do, go to the store, why are you going to the store? Because I need to maintain health and nutrition and a larger goal. So that's what I tried to do with, with, the, with a lot of these items to then be able to make a statement about why we were, you know, why I was doing these things. And I, I think they make sense. They make sense to me. I think they make, I think they are um, also sort of compatible with, um, some of the information that we, I think this was also in my mind as we were thinking about how to collect the information for the long range plan um, because I think these things are all sort of linked together. It would have been great to have the long range plan in place before creating such a document, but you know, the fact that I was doing all of this thinking about these two things, which are one is my own personal professional goals, one is um, institutional organizational goals, those things should be relatively you know, running in parallel. So the only thing I would say, and, and maybe I've just spent too many years back in education, is that um, I love them. I, I want to start by saying that, that I, I was, I, I really like them. I like them as goals. To me, they remind me a lot of like what we do in education, which is goals and then objectives, which are the action items under the goals, which is, which is kind of what you did. Um, the only kind of sticking point I have is like, I'm still, I, I wonder if there should be, the objective should be more like action items, like grant opportunities. Is, is that <coughs> mean you're going to seek grant opportunities? Do, do, do you see my questions? No. Under goal, building towards strength through financial independence. <coughs> so it says fundraising subcommittee. Does that mean we're going to organize one? Like you're going to organize one? Act, like, yeah, they're I, not I, actionable I was, objectives. It's like my. They're, they're not. I mean. Well, the way they're worded, it's not like capital planning. So like, what, what does that mean? So capital planning in terms, in, in a current example of that is that we're approaching the town for fall town meeting to purchase $10,000 worth of computers for public use. So we're using, you know, we're using assets that are available to us to improve. I mean, it's something that you either do it or you don't do it. We could just say, well, we're not, we're not doing it. It would be less work not to do it. But it, I mean, I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm your, it's phrasing a, my question correctly. Maybe so I'm you want more verbs that describe Specific. the action that will be taken on an item? Right, like I know what capital planning is. It's not that I don't know what it is, but I'm saying if you're measuring someone on a goal on having achieved it, how do you correct. how do I know that it has been without actually or partially achieved. that's yeah. right, yeah. I like all the things on there. I'm totally in favor of them. I just think it's a wording issue. So working off of what you're saying, Joanne, so under communication goal, improve quality and effectiveness of communication and planning. You know, our goals are considered SMART goals and the M in that SMART acronym is measurable. Well, improve quality, how much? You know, I'm just wondering about those measurements of these goals. Well, that, so actually, that, that's this one actually came directly out of I think your your feedback when when we kind of were starting this and was getting you know suggestions from individual trustees, and you had kind of given a sort of I don't know if it was anecdotal but kind of like, like that idea of like I've been around town I talked to a lot of people about the library and you know I think your suggestion was how do we how do we create the how do we create 
create the outreach? You know, how do we get people that haven't been to the library to know yeah, about the library? More access, more attractive, more available to all citizens in our but, community. But the but the question the question for me is how do you measure that? As far as I'm yeah. concerned, right. that is already happening because the numbers year over year are going up. So, I mean, it, it's hard to, I mean, so I guess what I would say is, having put this together, I think now it's up to, to, you, to you folks to, if you like what's in the stew pod here, now put it into the form, serve it up in the form that you want so that you can put the metrics to it if you need metrics. I personally am, am more... Um, and it, it could be that it's a checklist and like we go back and review it and give a number based on the checklist. Patrick, I'm just trying to remove yeah, no. a lot yeah. of subjectivity yeah. Yeah. and you know and, and kind of guidance for people to say, okay, this is a clear four because he met three out of four of these. Or this is I'm I'm just trying to help it be concrete. It's I like it a lot. I like that. There's goals gathered together with objectives and I like them. I think they match what we do. So Joanne, for instance, on, on capital planning, you would say um, present to town meeting a uh, proposal for $10,000 worth of new computers. Is that what you're thinking about? I mean, that's a very concrete um, goal. Or it could be like, you know. Oh, I'm just using that as an example. I mean, it could be other things. I guess, I guess from my point of view, the, the thing about this is that's kind of like, that's a little bit complicated is that if you, if you completely Like I wouldn't have been able to tell you that six months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, some of this is yeah. just more like, did you did you utilize the town meeting or not the town meeting process, but did you utilize the capital planning process to further, you know, the whatever the the goal of the library was in terms of physical improvements and, and maintenance. And some years that all that entails is providing an update to the capital planning committee. No, we're not asking for any money this year. But next year we might, and we might not know that we're doing that. It's all a matter of timing, and we might not know that until a month before the paperwork is due. That yeah, we ought to, we ought to fix the carpet that's wrong, or you know what I mean. It's hard to really know that a year in advance. So what? you have to be careful how it's working. Well, one idea might be. I'm just trying to be creative and throw out ideas. Is um, it could be in our measurement tool rather than in his goal tool, where it's, it may be like. How about goal building towards strength through financial independence? So then on our measurement tool, it says, you know, I'm making this up, five, Patrick completed all of, you know, all of the listed objectives. Four, Patrick completed 90% of his list. Mm -hmm. Like we, we could turn it in that way, right? Like so that it gives you some flexibility and it helps us decide which what he's accomplished. But then we um, run into this whole issue which we've already discussed about things, parts of it being out of his control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can't penalize someone for something that they couldn't control to begin with, which is where a director's position is not the same as an educator's position. And so I don't think you can But I, I don't think it over. does because if say say let's let's look at the fundraising subcommittee. Say he tries to organize it and it didn't didn't work out, but he tried to organize it. And then you're measuring at the end of the year and you're like, oh, he said he was going to try to do this. He did try to do it. It didn't work out, but he tried to do it. Like it's not like he just forgot that objective altogether. It just for whatever reason there wasn't anyone interested or whatever the reason is it didn't work out. You might still give him the full credit for that because he did what he said he was going to do, which is, yeah. do you see what I'm saying? Like even with teacher goals, often you don't, you can't fulfill the the goal, but they want to know that you, tr try. like if you said you were going to do this, did you try to do it, right? Like that's already built into this document. I don't think we need to make this any more complicated. Than it's it built is. into what document? Into his, his, uh, his document that he's given. His goals. Uh, I, I'm talking about when we measure him at the end of, so what, when we, we do the annual review. Isn't that a separate thing from what we're talking about now? But it's based on the goals. So I'm just saying that another way to leave to it the way them. it is and, and say, okay, this, this methodology could work is by thinking about the end game. No, I understand what you're saying. 
Can you rewind and go back in history? Why is the process of creating the goals, why is it changing in September 2024 compared to 2023, 2022? What was the flaw with the old method of doing this? Or did you not have goals or what was the, why are you rethinking this now? Because I think this is really only the second or third year we have had specific goals as opposed to just conducting the review against well, the job description. To go back to the beginning, there was no more formal set of goals when I first took the job. Um, there, was, there was a set of goals that I, I you know, as far as the document, I have to go dig it out and see what form it, it, it was in. But as the real world process of building the library came along. I, I, that, those, those, that measurement of those goals, we were constantly, I, I don't know why the trustees decided to sort of like let that go by the wayside, probably because some things had to be left by the wayside when so much was going on and there's so few people to do it. Yeah. Um, but it essentially just sort of became more of a, you know, we're, we're getting on with this other thing which is more important. I, I really can't speak to it, but it, it kind of fell by the wayside and it's being picked back up in the okay. last couple of years. To have more of like a coherent framework, particularly where um, in the in the sort of renegotiation of my contract in the last year, there was it was kind of a protracted affair. So how do we how do we have this so that it's a more streamlined process? And I think you're seeing my reaction because I came on board during the protracted um, negotiation negotiation, uh -huh. and I just really am. I really want to make sure that we wind up with, you know, something that is coherent and cohesive. Yeah. Yeah. It had been the case that any changes in Patrick's salary beyond the town COLA were based on the results of his review. And so there was a very different dynamic. And that was also done without specific goals, which made it more challenging for everybody. The contract now specifies what his salary will be over the course of the five years covered. Three years covered. Three. Three. Sorry. And so that sort of left us, gave us the freedom to design a more useful and more specific, con to conduct a, a review differently based on somewhat different criteria in addition to what is in the job description. So that's... That's helpful to hear yeah. the history mm -hmm. behind it. Sure. And, and isn't there an aspect of it also that now uh, there's a piece of it that's required by the Mass Library Association that the director has to have goals? No? I don't remember I don't know that, that that's that required. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that's a requirement. Okay. Because I can guarantee you there are many directors that don't have that. That don't. So, okay. yeah. But I, I do, you know, again, just to kind of step back, I, I, as far as the process goes here, I think we we're all a little bit sort of finding our way um, in this, because I think when we started out with this, we, we had, you know, a handful of things that, again, as I said, were, were fairly concrete things that were much more like put a check next mm -hmm. to it. I, yeah. I did my whole, and I, what I'm really trying to do right. here is give more, create a higher expectation for the work that I do and, and to make sure that the work that I'm doing stands next to what I think are the organizational goals of the library so that it's sort of mm -hmm. like they're more or less one and the same. And so that's why I've kind of done it in this way because I think this more or less covers the waterfront in a way that mm -hmm. other lists have not done necessarily to date. Um, and if there's something here that isn't here, then you know, it should be something we should talk about it. But I think from my point of view, this is pretty much, that covers like what I do when I come to work.
makes a lot of sense to me. So what should we do to move this forward? Well, we can either adopt it by consensus or if someone feels strongly, we can make a motion to accept the proposed director goals. I so move. Second. Is there any? I have a question. Sure. So will the committee that um, is in charge of Patrick's review then take these goals now and kind of think about how we will measure them when it's time, you know, measure his success when we get closer to evaluation time? Can I just ask the question, that does, does your, does your evaluation form essentially already provide those, those metrics through a set of categories such as financial or, you know, what, I can't remember what the other categories are, but they may not completely line up here. Yeah, but so we have to, we would have well, we to do review that. Yeah. and see. Okay. No, I mean, it would be silly to use a tool that's yes. not yes. relevant anymore, but no, I don't think that's a problem. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Um, the one last thing. I was wondering if we could find a volunteer to be the board liaison to the friends. Um, Patrick always attends the meetings unless he's out of the state or otherwise away. Um, and it has been useful as well as a sort of lines of communication, but also sort of building a relationship. Um, or if they think they meet monthly and not in the summer, uh, or every other month? They don't meet in July and August. Right. I can't remember if they meet it. They may not meet in December as well. I'm not sure. I can't remember about December. But it's not every month through the year. Yeah, it's every month except for this, you know, those two months in the summer. They, I mean, they do meet every month. Otherwise, it's monthly. Yeah. Yeah. But if somebody will, they usually meet on a different Tuesday? Third, or the second, the third the Tuesday. The third Tuesday. Yeah. So At the library? Um, right here in this room. There you go. <laughs> or if we made a sign-up sheet and people rotated in and out, that would be fine. Um, I'm certainly willing to consider options, but given I think it is helpful for them to see us and it is helpful for us to see them and what they are doing. And Did you just say that does it make sense to just go month, month by month because it's usually the week after this so people generally know their schedules so someone could just volunteer and say, yeah, I'll go, I'll go this. Too. Well, I mean, that's an option. I mean, if there were someone who would be willing to do it every month, that would be fine. Um, if no one wants to make that kind of commitment, is there anyone who wants to alternate? I, I would love to. I just am a, the newbie, and I, I have a lot to learn. I'm going to go to those meetings, I think. I'm going to take advantage of it as much as I can, but I think it would be better for someone with a little more seasoning to do this than me. It's not really, just to, to put your mind at ease though, it's really not a heavy lift. I think it's really, it's a very conversational group. They don't have necessarily a, a dog in the fight with any of the decisions that are made by the trustees. Generally, it's more just curiosity about what goes on and what's the, I heard this and I read this in the newspaper. You know, what's, yeah, what's going on? Newspaper. Um, but I, as, as Lynn is saying, I think it's really more a matter of just the goodwill of yeah, the uh, taking an interest and, and, you know, and interfacing with that group because they do support 
financially quite a lot of our operation. You know, a lot of our programming is now, uh, it always has been, but in, in a more formal way, since Joanne was on as president, we have a very, you know, now a very robust and formal relationship with the friends as far as going to them on a yearly basis and saying, these are the things we would like the friends to support. And, you know, and then taking that to implement you know, the, the summer reading programs or the subscription to the New York Times. So it's really just, you know, about kind of like maintaining that goodwill and, and um, relationship to, to that group. Because they are a very dedicated volunteer group. And occasionally so. reporting, you know, just mentioning what their conversation was or if they are planning anything. You might find yourself roped in to uh, make big, big goods. <laughs> for, uh, like Such a brownie making skill. <laughs> you only have to do that once before they would <laughs> relieve me of that duty. Uh, there's another Tuesday group that I'm supposed to be meeting with. If I'll be sure that they're not on the third month, third Wednesday. I, I, Okay. Well, but I'll check, have to check and that. either let Patrick know or let me know. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's, and it's also generally a short, pretty fairly short meeting. It's not, you know, it rarely ever goes over an hour. I think is that correct? That you is know. correct. That's correct. Yes. At least the line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, unless we have. Anything else? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So you have time to get home and make popcorn. <laughs> or pour a glass of wine. <laughs> or both. <laughs> or something a little stiffer. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what else? Take notes for my students. Do we need to vote on adjourning or yes. just? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Okay. Ah.